Hey, Brett from Shinedown. How are you, man? I'm doing very, very well. How are you today, sir? Good, good. It's been a little bit since we've seen you here in Reno. I know, but we got a big, giant show getting ready to come to you guys. We're going to bring you a bunch of dragons, lasers, and fire. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> dragons. Now, is this the first time Shinedown has used dragons in a, uh, in a live scenario? Um, it's the first time that we found the right dragon to use <laughs> in a live scenario. Now, this isn't going to be one of those inflatable dragons that you might be able to purchase on, I don't know, Amazon.com, is it? Oh, absolutely not. This is I, It's going to be one of those things where everybody in the audience will, will get their own dragon. <laughs> I was talking to uh, Brett Smith from Shinedown. Man, one of the greatest voices in all of rock in this age. How do you keep it so pristine? I mean, you guys have got a pretty rigorous tour schedule. Uh, first of all, I do not deserve that compliment at all. I will take it, though, from you, sir, and be very appreciative of it. Uh, how I keep it pristine is I pray a lot. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's one of those things, man, where I, over the years, um, I've had to listen to it. Um, as I've gotten older, I feel like, knock on wood, I've gotten stronger. Um, you know, keeping the schedule that we keep on the road and the way that the cycles will kind of, uh, they'll kind of piggyback each other. And, you know, this year of 2019, actually the first time where um, we're pretty much booked all the way through December of this year. Wow. And the cool thing about that is, you know, not everything is on sale yet or announced, but it allows me to know when I have the, the off time between the work cycle, the touring cycle, and everything in the middle, because you know, outside of just being an artist, being a singer and performer, you know, I'm still a part of the music business. It is called the music business for a reason. Right. Um, I just have to be very, very mindful of how I take care of myself on the road, and you know, listen to it, and and realize that I'm not a machine. And so, the healthier I am, and the stronger I am, the healthier and the stronger my voice will be. Now, thinking back to when Shine Down first started, Brett, um, it, what, it, is it was it something that was taught? Were you given some, I don't know, some some pointers from some been there, done that folks on how to treat yourself, and then had to find out on your own what they were talking about, or is it something that you had to take a step back from everything when the band started to blow up and go, wait a minute, if I continue to go down this path? Path, it's not going to look very good. One thousand percent. I I honestly have to be very vocal about this. I'm a very very humble and very lucky individual um, in a lot of different reasons. Um, I say that because you know some of my friends in the beginning, going all the way back, all the way back to the beginning, like our first record came out in two thousand and three. Um, and now we're on our sixth album and, you know, we, we take that very, very seriously because at the end of the day, we only have one boss. It just happens to be everybody in the audience. But you know what, man, unfortunately, some of the people that I came up with, you know, they're, they're not here anymore because they didn't figure it out early enough. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, their weaknesses and, and their demons kind of got the best of them, man. And I think with that, also, and, and not to put a damper on this interview and what we're talking about here, but you have to listen to yourself, man. And you also have to listen to the people around you because I feel like, you know, when I walk into an environment, I try to be the hardest worker in the room. But here's the thing, man. I'm only as good as the people I surround myself with. So there was a lot of trial and error. Um, there was, a, 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 you know, a decent amount of luck over the years. But ultimately, there was definitely, you know, some key moments in the band's history where we all four had to look at each other and make a decision, which was, look, man, the sky's the limit, and we can do everything that we set our minds to and, and, and push forward. But we have to understand that, you know, we're still human. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to listen to our bodies. Um, and we have to learn how to schedule touring better. Uh, time management, especially in 2019, is a big that's a big deal nowadays, man, because there's such an influx of technology and, you know, instant gratification and all these elements that can sometimes make you feel like you're missing something. What right. I try to tell people in the industry when they're starting out and if they're in the middle of their career, per se, and they want to get bigger, uh, just remember this, man. Don't be afraid to climb any mountain. Sometimes the mountains are really, really, you know, they're big. Um, but, 
you know, you may not be able to get to the top of it by yourself, but if you do it together with the right people around you, there's nothing that you can't accomplish. And we've never really been a band, and I've never really been somebody that believed in a ceiling. Um, I'm always trying to outdo what I've already done, but you know what? Also inside of that, you have to understand that you are human. Uh, you do have to take care of yourself, and you have to take care of the people around you. You know, that begets two really important questions that I've thought about a lot over the years. The first one is, with a schedule as busy as you've got, and I, and, and I understand that being on the road, there's a lot of hurry up and wait. You have these really big moments of elation and where you're feeding back on the energy of the audience. And then you have a lot of this time where you're on the road and there's, you know, four, five, six hours in between shows where you got nothing to do. How do you how do you maintain that work life balance, and what do you do in those down times to make sure it's constructive and not destructive? That's question number one. That's a that's a that's first of all that's a that's a an intense question uh, and a very relative uh, question. Um, you know, look, I, I can only talk from experience. You know, going back to you know the twenty four hours of a day, and there is sometimes that that window of you know, a lot of people say in a 24 hour period, I wait all day for like 20 hours just to have that two hours on stage. And ultimately, you know, I go back to uh, 2011 and for me personally, because what happened to me was I had made a decision that in 2011 that I was going to stop drinking and I was going to stop, uh, you know, kind of. You know, I do have a past with substance abuse and what have you. I just made a conscious decision that I was going to quit. Um, I was very overweight at the time. I decided I was going to get healthy. I was going to learn how to exercise, and I was going to learn how to eat right. So kind of long story short, from 2011 up into 2012, I lost 70 pounds and got myself together. I was clean for a year. We went out on the album Amaryllis um, after the success of the album and the touring cycle was down to madness. So from 2012 all the way to 2014, I was on the road with this brand new, like, you know, lease on life. And, dude, I was just a machine, man. Yeah. The whole band was. And we were just coming in, you know, just going for it. And what happened to me was, because it was so scheduled, because there was such an intense um, daily life of being in this band, and there was always something going on, and we were always, like, pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing uh, to get bigger and better and more, you know, awareness to the band, when it all stopped right before the beginning of 2015, because we had been out on the road for two years, dude, I, I fell off the wagon, hmm. you know, and because I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to live, you know what I mean? It was like my, I had this purpose between 2012 and 2014 that I never had, and then all of a sudden it just stopped. So you talk about when you know certain musicians and what have you you walk out on stage and you see thousands upon thousands of people and believe me we've done both sides you know we played in front of five people before we played in front of five hundred thousand people before mm -hmm. but what happens is when that psychologically that euphoria isn't there every night and you're supposed to like be done with touring and go back to the family and kind of be a, a bit more domesticated i couldn't do that because i didn't even know how to i didn't even know how to do that yeah. You know what I mean? And so I, I I fell off the wagon, and luckily I have an amazing uh, support group. I look at the album Threat to Survival. There was a reason it was called Threat to Survival. That was kind of a two-year journey for me where it was like withdrawing from, from what I had kind of done because I had fallen off the wagon. But, you know, the guys in my band never... They, they never judged me. You know, they were never coming to me going, you know, look, man, we know you messed up. We understand, but we need to get you healthy again. And I think that if you're lucky enough to have people around you that are willing to to help you, um, then that's always going to be beneficial. But you have to put it back on yourself, too. You have to make a decision for you as an individual. So now, coming off of that, um, I've been clean since uh, March 1st of 2016. Um, but I just got to do it one day at a time, man. I literally, I've told people this before, if they've asked me, I'm like, man, I didn't drink today. I didn't do drugs today. Uh, I have no idea what I'll do tomorrow, but right. I mean, for that part of my life, I have to, I don't have to like the fact that I have an addictive personality, but I have to respect it. And, you know, it allows me to, to look at my schedule better. 
And, uh, and, you know, because everybody's different, you know, everybody has a different life. And for me personally, you know, that, that euphoria that happens out on the road, you know, I appreciate that, but I also look forward to the downtime because it's not really downtime for me. I get to spend it with my son. I get to be with my family and, you know, it's just separating the schedule and doing what's right for you. Right. And so the second part of that question, uh, you know, I think about guys like Chester Bennington or like uh, Chris yeah. Cornell or even, you know, big celebrities like Prince and Michael Jackson who have lost their battles. Um, and, and when people start to critique that and say, oh, they were an idiot, oh, they were this, oh, they pa- and start passing judgment, I almost have to stop and, and just fathom the question. I don't know if there's any truth to it, but when you are a brand and you are a business, a multi-million dollar business like Shinedown is, um, you all, I would imagine that you surround yourself with people who are on your payroll and they are paid to say yes. They're paid to say yes and provide what you want, when you want it, and when you need it. And when you live in that reality, uh, who is the person or what is the thing that keeps you in check? The thing that gives you that look in the mirror or the person that gives you that real life look in the mirror, like you might not like what I have to say about you, but I'm going to be critical and you're screwing up because of blank. You know what? That is probably one of the more uh, put together questions that I've been asked in my entire career. Uh, you you got some pretty heavy questions, man. <laughs> you know, um, I'm, I'm in my 40s now, and, I, and I, 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 for whatever reason, I've been thinking a lot about that over the past three years, about how am I presenting, right? Yeah, you know what, man? You, you bring up the, the hard questions, which is a lot of times what people, no matter what industry they're in, will kind of shy away from. Um, but it's so, it, it's so spot on what you're asking. I don't think that there is a, you know, life doesn't have an instruction manual. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you have to find out sometimes, and the best way to, uh, is trial and error. Now, with that being said, to answer your question, you know, if I put it on, because we knew some of the people that were around some of the individuals that you just talked about, people like Chris Cornell, people like Chester Bennington, uh, even people like Robin Williams and Prince and, you know, uh, even, you know, here recently, uh, Keith Flint yeah. from the Prodigy, mm-hmm. you know. Um, there are a lot of yes men and a lot of yes women in the industry. That's, that's a given. You know, there was a, there was a comment made back in the, the early 2000s uh, that basically said, you know, mo- more money, more problems. Yeah. And that depends on the individual, in my, in, in, in my better judgment, because at the end of the day, it's always going to start with you. Right. So I think the very, the person that I talk to the most, and some people might think that this is a little odd, but it's true. I, I have to talk to the dude that's in the mirror every day. Hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I have to, there's a lot of people look to me in the organization to have a lot of the answers, but it's also how I delegate certain things you know the band always tries to have complete control of the schedule whether it's studio whether it's touring whether it's certain events red carpet award season any of those things like you have to be the master of your own destiny now in the same breath there are a lot of people around us that are looking out for our best interest and really looking at the scope of the band and what we want to achieve and how we want to present ourselves to the world but i will 1000 percent always bring it back to the audience which is very to the point with me, we have one boss. It just happens to be everybody in the audience. And the, the, the lucky thing for us, I would say, is that we have been in some really heavy situations over the years and some really scary situations. We've kind of weeded out the people that are not here for the right reasons for the band and the ones that have been here for the longest amount of time because they've been able to grow with us and they themselves have been able to grow because of us. It's always going to be, you know, as long as there's respect between everyone in the party, if you know what I mean, yeah. then really the sky's the limit. But at the end of the day, man, you got to put it back on yourself. You can't be a finger pointer. Yeah, no doubt. So, so what you're telling me, Brent, is you do, you, you feel you do a pretty darn good job of self-checking. I have to, man, because, like, I'm the one that signed up for it. You know what I mean? Like, I think about, 
um, you know, the schedule that we keep and, and how we do what it is we do. Um, we're always evolving too. And we're all, here's the other thing. We're list, we listen actually, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. over the years, I think it's one of the reasons why we've been able to last, uh, the majority of the time that we have been in the industry because we don't make the same record twice. We don't write the same song over and over again. And we're very, very fortunate to work with people from a managerial, from a management side, um, because we've been with Bill McGaffey, our manager, for over 20 years. We've been with Atlantic Records for over 20 years. We actually just signed an extension with Atlantic Records for two more albums uh, after Attention, Attention, which is the current album we're on right. right now. So we've been very fortunate to be with a lot of the same people that were already in a higher position when we met them yeah. you know, 20 years ago, and they've grown with us. We've taught them things, and they've taught us things. But the beautiful thing about that is every single day you're going to learn something new. Every single day you learn how to do or portray yourself or just, you know, outline your life um, in, a, in a better way. You know, like I said, there, life doesn't have an instruction manual. Yeah, yeah. We're on with Brent Smith. Show happens here in Reno July the 24th over at the Reno Event Center. Hey, brother, tell me about some of these bands that are on the bill. I know you're, you're, uh, you're taking Broken Hands out on the road with you and Dinosaur Pile Up. And uh, this little band called Bad Flower that's uh, to, a, to a lot of folks who uh, are unfamiliar with the band or weren't until the song Ghost came out. Kind of an overnight success. Tell me about uh, your thoughts on these guys. So the, we had two different options. Um, when we were looking at the, uh, the touring schedule for this year. And we started looking at this particular tour in regards to Broken Hands, Dinosaur Pileup, and Bad Flower right around December of last year. And we had offers to work with some other bands that we had worked with in the past, and this is 1,000% not a slight to those bands, but we kind of thought to ourselves, you know what, why don't we, because the other side of this too was we were really, really we are, I shouldn't say we were, we, we are really, really into Bad Flower. We have been like since we heard Ghost last mm-hmm. year yeah. and now with their album being out and dude, that band is, they are, <laughs> that, you know what that band is right now in 2019? That band is necessary. Yeah, because they are on another level, man, of just absolute fury. Like from a very cool style uh, with the music. The front man, Josh Katz, is just—he's very intriguing on every level. Yeah, um, I like to call but, him manic. You know, I've been a fan of Dinosaur Pileup for quite a number of years. Broken Hands, brand new band from the UK, uh, coming out with uh, new material this year. You know what we wanted to do, man? We wanted to tour with some bands that we had never toured with that were newer, younger, um, and also to to give them an opportunity to come out on a tour that's going to be, you know, kind of on a bigger scale. Yeah. Um, but also, honestly, because we're fans of these bands and we think that they're going to be, uh, we feel like they're going to, they're already, you know, they're rattling the cage, man. They're shaking the tree. So yeah. we asked them if they wanted to come out and tour with us this summer and they were like, hell yeah, let's do it. Well, I, I appreciate you doing that for the uh, for the next generation. And, you know, I don't know much about Dinosaur Pileup or Broken Hands. I'm familiar with some of their music. I have uh, chatted with Josh Katz from Bad Flower on a, a number of occasions. Uh, and Josh, boy, I'll tell you, if, uh, if, if there was a student to bring along or, or a, uh, you know, a future rock star that could learn something from somebody at the top of their game, um, I would point straight to you to be a, an incredible mentor. So I, I hope that you and Josh have got plenty plenty of downtime that you can mentor that kid a little bit because man he has got a lot of talent yeah you know what and, and i appreciate those those words and 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 i think one thing is uh, me and josh have been texting with one another i think they're in europe right now and then they're coming back in and uh, we're trying to get a schedule together where we can actually meet each other face to face before we start the tour because it is early in the year but you know the, the cool thing about josh is that he's very very comfortable in his own skin you yeah. know what i mean and, you know, I think one thing in regards to, I'll be honest with you, man, I'm hoping to learn some stuff from, from Josh, man, because he's an intriguing cat, man. 
Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, we are really looking forward to the show. Brett Smith from Shinedown, an honor always to speak with you. And every time we've met, um, you're, just, you're just such a warm, kind uh, individual with a hell of a lot of talent. And I appreciate you taking the time out to give us a call. July 24th, Reno Event Center. Tickets at kdot.com. Brother, appreciate it, man. Be safe, and we'll see you soon here in Reno. Absolutely, man. Thank you so, so much for all the support with the band. And just, you know, we cannot wait to see everybody in Reno. And uh, much love, much support. It's very, very appreciated, man. Thanks so much uh, for all the hospitality. And I hope everybody's ready for, let's just put it this way, we're going to bring you the biggest show you've seen all year. So we're stoked to see you guys. Hell yeah.